Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. These are highlights from the Q&A on September 17th. The Sheikh commented on the hadith where the Prophet ﷺ said, My companions are like the stars. Whoever you take as guide, you will be guided. And he commented on Siraj Munir, a luminous lamp. Siraj is a uh, lamp and Munir is luminous or illuminating. The Siraj corresponds to the sun. The sun, uh, the light of the sun is a Siraj, it's a lamp that illuminates. And the Qamar is Munir, it's illuminating or it's radiance by virtue of the sun. So the Prophet ﷺ is a Siraj Munir. His quality of being a sun is his knowledge that one gains during the day. It's a Siraj, whereas his knowledge at night is Nur. It's the knowledge of the night of the moon versus the knowledge of the day of the sun and our work is at during the day and the night as well the sun is what enables us to calculate the times of the prayer the moon on the other hand is what we use as the basis for the calculation of the month by virtue of the sun the natural world comes to be and there's no life without the sun but the moon should not be belittled either night would be dark there would be no reckoning or accounting of the months or stars now the night is not the same thing as darkness a layl is not the same thing as dhulumat the quran describes him sallallahu as siraj munir he begins with the sun first and then at the second level Munir is the moon and the third level are the stars who are the companions and those companions are as stars the calf here is the calf of tashbih calf of declaring divine similarity or comparability and when the prophet uses the calf of tashbih one should be very attentive because the likeness that he's striking is very near this is also the calf of of as if you see him it's the calf of lordship, calf of rububiya. When Jibreel alayhi salam said, Ihsan is to worship God as if you know him, ka'annaka tara. He is one who masters speech and the spirit of the letter and the word. And what he says is worth its weight in the here and the hereafter. God declares the tremendousness or the importance of the locations of the stars, mawaqiya and nujum. And a companion is a star. Therefore, his place or his mawqiyah is in the Qur'an. And the coming together of the companions in their entirety is the Qur'an. So a single sahabi corresponds to one location in the Qur'an or mawqiyah and najm. And the coming together of all the sahaba corresponds to the bringing together of the entire Qur'an. One sahabi might be compared to a single juz of the Qur'an. This does not apply to the companions who just saw the Prophet but were in a state of disbelief. The stars are many, and we give importance or focus on the solar system, al-majmu'a al-shamsiya. We should seek knowledge from the one who has knowledge of these stars. But when the sun manifests, then the stars will be concealed. When the stars are hidden, the sun manifests the light that flows through them. Here the Shaykh, cosmologically, there's a connection from our vantage point of we see the sun, and, and symbolically the stars der- derive their light from the sun, as does the moon. And so when the sun rises, the light of the stars is concealed. So if you witness the stars, try to see the companions. In the non-manifest or in the, in the batin, at night, it's the moon. And in the dahir, the manifest, it's the sun. The moon precedes the sun. The moon is the night, the vision at night. And the Sheikh went on a long explanation of, of connecting one's vision of the stars with the companions. And he drew a parallel between what's called Najmatul Fajr, the star of the dawn, which shines in the direction of the Qibla. And he asked the question, which star is that? Is that the star of Abu Bakr? Is it the star of Omar? Who can answer that? the one who perfects knowledge of the stars. People of old were in touch with the spheres and with the heavenly bodies and would count things using the length of shadows and the rectitude of the sun. We've replaced all of this 
with watches. And of course there were no watches back then, so people were strongly connected with the sun. Once the Sheikh was asked, why do you put a subha around your neck? And he said, because it's a condition for the invocation. And then he looked at the person asking the question, he says, why do you have a watch around your wrist? And the answer is, because it's a condition for the prayer. Because you need the watch to know the prayer. The Shaykh then went into a long commentary on black holes, Tuqbun Najm, how it swallows itself by itself. If the sun implodes, that's literally the end. And he said that if you don't read these signs in the horizons, in the afaq, you don't see them in your soul either, in the nafs. If your inner vision is limited on the horizons and you're unable to connect the Sahaba and the stars, then then you bring that knowledge of the companions in the stars into yourself again and you find it to be dazzlingly parallel and striking that's when uh, after the yatafakkaruna fi khalqi samawati wal ard wa yaqul subhanaka i mean uh, after one goes through these invocations then one says subhanaka in that state of fear but it, it depends on having uh, a far reaching uh, inner vision and outer vision that one then connects internally. Basically, if you don't see these signs on the horizons clearly and get into the habit of seeing them, those parallels, you won't see them in, in your soul. And he drew the parallel of one going to the moon. So if you're going to the moon, you have to bring your oxygen and whatever makes it habitable for you to be up there for a while. And then you come back. Uh, similarly, when you visit the nukta, the dot that summarizes uh, the entire Quran, you have to go through it and you have to bring your life to it. And that's what you do through istighfar. You must enter that dot. You say, I can't enter into it, but I keep pushing you on. The lesson was essentially teaching the murids how to see these correspondences themselves. Essentially, he offers keys that open both the here and the hereafter, the dunya and the akhirah, and to see connections between the two because you can unlock the both with the same key. So the Sheikh says you have to observe courtesy with the stars, just as you observe courtesy with the companions. And he commented on elevation or ulu, aboveness, said that's whatever is above the earth is mercy and whoever wants elevation he has to ponder and reflect on elevation in ulu otherwise one remains upon the earth on the ard the prophet sallam ascended to jabal nur the mount of light because he was seeking elevation ulu this is why a lot of the monasteries in the days of old are found at the peaks of mountains your outer vision is your horizon and that the basar is your ufuq. So your basira, your inner vision, is what sees the afaq, the horizons with the signs. And the basar, the, the outer vision, it sees the, sort of the field of vision around. And he says you have to uh, widen your vision. And that's what begins to open the soul. Instead, what we do is we go up to mountains. We bring our picnics and we dirty the mountain. Then we come back down. We don't walk up mountains in order to reflect on the parallels between the stars and oneself and the companions. There was a faqir uh, that asked a question uh, in, in this line uh, about uh, the significance of what he saw in the, in the bay'ah. Basically, there were faint stars in concentric circles. So on. There was darkness, then a band of stars, then blackness, and a band of stars, and so on, in concentric circles. And they were projecting uh, outward, and if it's as if one was traveling into them. Then when he would open his eyes, those stars would scatter, and the, the stars would turn into gray, and they would stop moving. They didn't change colors, but they would stop moving. So there was movement when he closed his eyes, and then there was stillness when he opened it. And the Sheikh here commented very extensively on Ratq and Fatq. The Quranic verse says the heavens and the earth were Ratq, a, a stitched mass, or an original stitched mass, and then we uh, loosened them or unstitched them. فَفَتَقْنَاهُمَا So in, in your dhikr, he said, you're journeying through these heavens. You have to read and ascend. اِقْرَأْ وَارْتَقِي what occurs inside of you, in your soul, in your heart, is what occurs to you outside, and the parallels have to be there.
You have to acquire knowledge of the Spirit. The Prophet was ascended, عُرِجَ بِهِ وسلم, through the heavens. This here is knowledge of al-ishara, of illusion, how to read. And then he um, he said, your ayat al-raka'ib, your, your mountain verse that, that you should meditate on, is this verse of, then the Shaykh related this Ratqan Fatq to the Faqir's uh, job and told him to work on this process of loosening and unloosening as he's doing his istighfar. And, and for that process of opening and closing, it has to widen more and more until each one is about five minutes to open and close and then 15 minutes to open and close and he said, then, then bring your entire house into the opening and don't worry, it'll come back and then close it again. He asked him what he works in and the faqir said he teaches but also was in uh, artificial intelligence. And the shaykh said, you have to develop ilmun ilahi, divine knowledge that you can apply to both realms. He, he commented on how the internet is like a series of points in concentric circles. And it, it comprises of the various uh, people who, makes it up, who make it up, like Google, for instance, he said, we are Google, I put something on the internet, you do, everybody does, and then the sum total of that is, is, is what makes Google what it is. You can view the internet as a, a series of concentric circles, and how, how you navigate through them is similar. Even the basis of artificial intelligence is the bit, which is the dot, the single dot. And he compared how the nukta, the dot and the letters comprises all things. And that the keyboard is a way to access the internet and uh, the letter is the dot that's unfurled or uh, uh, unpacked. The overriding point is that the ayat al that he gave him on Ratq and Fatq is a key that he can use to navigate both his internal spiritual life and the outer realm that he works in. One of the keys of, of this dars that he gave is how each spiritual journey is different from from the other and it's reflected in, in the mushahada. So in the same dars there was a pilot who had taken hand at the same time and that pilot, when he took hand, he saw a twister and the sheikh gave commentary on that twister. Right now he said you have one airline from point A to point B and think of it as a glue as global airport and you're going to fly every airline uh, and every uh, journey uh, from every airport. And he also saw a podium when he took hand at the end of the twister and the sheikh said don't stop at that, you have to keep going further. Overall we're getting a lot of details on each individual's path and th these different paths differ. And the murid's task is to learn how to navigate the dahir and the batin using this key that the shaykh gives based on what they see during the bay'ah and what they see during the istighfar and invocations. And in a sense, it's a process of ratq and fatq for everyone. Although the verses that he gives of ayat al-raka'ib for each, each faqir is different. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad kama sallayta ala Sayyidina Ibrahim wa ala ali Sayyidina Ibrahim wa barik ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad كما باركت على سيدنا إبراهيم وعلى آل سيدنا إبراهيم في العالمين إنك حميد مجيد إنك حميد